Well, hello, everybody, and bless that wonderful name of Jesus, and welcome to Walking by Faith. Hallelujah. Well, look, I want to introduce myself. I'm Pastor Raynard Sands of Be Like Jesus Ministry here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest of the United States of America, and I hope wherever you at, it's a beautiful day today. Glory be to God. Hey, we are going to continue our teaching on faith is acting on the word. And we into 2024. Happy New Year to all of you guys too. Glory be to God. This is a new year. I am excited. I hope you are excited for this year. I believe one of those words of the Lord is this is going to be a year of more and more and more and more. Hallelujah. And I'm believing that there's going to be more joy, more peace, more uh, healing, more revelation knowledge, more provision, and more uh, of the glory of God in your life than you ever seen before. But the key is you must be a doer of the word. See, just because you go to church don't mean that you acting on the word. And I, I really want to get that in you. You, you. you can go to church, you can hear the word, but you have to act on it to see the results that you're believing for in your life. So do me a favor, make sure you hit the uh, like button hit the share and subscribe. We want to reach as many people as we can, and we need your help in reaching other people. You have a sphere of influence and people that you know that I can't know without you helping to introduce me to them. So I need you to hit the like, the share, and subscribe. So let's pray, let's make our daily confession, and let's continue in our lesson on faith is acting on the word of God. So Father, right now in Jesus' name, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for this privilege. I thank you for this opportunity to share the wonderful gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, for helping us not to be just, just hearers of the word of God, but doers of the word of God. And then I thank you for the Holy Spirit. He's the greater one who lives on the inside of me. I thank you, Father. He's our teacher. He's our guide. And Holy Spirit, I submit myself to you, and I ask you to help me to teach this word in simplicity and accuracy to meet the needs of the people. And then, Father, I thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that come against us in judgment shall be condemned. So right now, in Jesus' name, I bind every outer word, every corrupt communication, every false accusation, every plot, every plan, every strategy, every maneuver that the devil would try to bring against us this night or this day to hinder the word of God and hinder the promises of God from coming to pass in our lives. For we declare and we decree in the mighty name of Jesus, not one of these things should come to pass or be manifested in our lives in Jesus' name. But we touch and agree, Father, that only the goodness of God, only the will and the plan and purpose of God should come to pass and be manifested in our lives. We believe, Father, that all the blessing of Abraham's of ours. We believe, Father, in Jesus' name, that right now we, we are going to receive the wisdom of God, the understanding, the revelation, knowledge of God, the peace, the love, the forgiveness, and the healing power of God. We thank you, Father, that what you have started in us you will complete in us until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, and we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, get your Bibles. Come on, get your Bibles. Let's make this faith confession together. Are you guys ready? Get your Bibles. Put them in the air. Wave them like you really care. Here we go. Okay? This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, let's go to our foundation scripture. That's over in James. I'm reading this from the Richard Francis Weymouth translation. That's over in James chapter 2 and verses 14 
through 26. Hallelujah. James 14 through 26 in the Richard Francis Weymouth translation. It says, what good is it, my brethren, if a man professes to have faith and yet his actions do not correspond? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother and a sister are poorly glad or lack daily food. And one of you says to them, fear you well, keep yourselves warm and well fed, and yet you do not supply your bodily needs. What is, your, what is the use of that? So also faith, if it is unaccompanied by obedience, is dead in itself. Nay, someone will say, you have faith, I have actions. Prove to me your faith apart from your corresponding actions, and I will prove mine to you by my actions. You believe that God is one, and you are quite right. Evil spirits also believe this and shudder. But idle boaster, are you willing to be taught that faith apart from obedience is worthless? Was it not because of his actions that Abraham our father was declared to be righteous when he had offered up his son Isaac upon the altar? You notice that his faith was cooperating with his actions and that by his actions, his faith was perfected. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and Abraham believed God and his faith was credited to him as righteousness. And he received the name of God's friend. You see that it is because of actions that a man is pronounced righteous and not simply because of faith. In the same way also, was not the harlot Rahab declared to be righteous because of her actions? when she welcomed the spies and sent them off another way. For just as a human body without a spirit is lifeless, so also faith is lifeless without obedience. That's why it is so important, my brothers and sisters, that we don't just hear the word, but do the word. Why? Because faith without action is no good. Faith is acting on the word or on the word of God. If you want your faith to work, you're going to have to act on what God says. No other way about it. You can't just hear it. You have to act on it if you want to see the results that you desire to see. Now, last week when we were with you, we finished teaching on, we was talking about Matthew's chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. And Jesus was given two comparisons. You know, he this is where he was teaching in the uh, Mount of, uh, of olives he was teaching i mean or we call it the sermon on the mount he was in the mount and he was coming to giving the conclusion of that service and he would say look there's two type of people there's a wise man and there's a foolish man the wise man he hears the word of god okay but he doesn't do it i mean the wise man he excuse me the wise man hears the word of god and he does it and jesus said because he does it his faith his house is founded upon the rock now he also says the foolish man he hears the word of God, but watch what he says. He hears it, but he doesn't do it. And he compared that house to being built on the sand. Now, what you notice in both of them comparisons, both men went through the same tests or trials and tribulations. What was the different outcome? One heard it and one did it. And his house stood. But the one heard it and didn't do what Jesus said, same tests, same trials came to both houses. It says, his house was built upon the sand. And this is what he said. That house fell. Now watch this. And great was the fall thereof. Man, that, that, that is powerful, powerful, powerful. When Jesus tells you and I, we can't just hear this word. I don't know why people get upset when they get the results they not wanting. And they say, well, why did this happen? And you just have to examine yourself. Did I do what God said to do? Because if you do what God says to do, Jesus said, hey, no matter what tests or trials come, you're going to be standing. But if you don't do what he says to do, he also told you the results of that. He says, it's going to fall and great will be the fall there. So I just encourage you. That's why the spirit of the Lord led us and we teaching on this, that faith is acting on the word of God. If you want the results that the word promised you, you're going to have to act. Now watch this and do things the way God says to do it. You can't get in the middle and say, well, God, I don't want to do it that way. Well, I'm here to tell you, you're going to have a fall. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus already told us.
The tests and trust trials of life are going to come, but that's going to fall. Why? Because it's not built on the word of God. If you want your house to stand, excuse me. Ooh, thought I was going to sneeze it. I just did. But excuse me. But if you want your house to stand, what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to do what God says to do. Amen. Now let's go to Proverbs. I want to go to Proverbs chapter 3 and look at verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. This is in the Amplified. I mean, this is not in the, Ampl in the, in the King James Bible. Look in the King James Bible. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Now I know you know this. See, so here. But you got to keep hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, I want to yeah, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. See, that's one thing I want to deal with tonight. People say, oh, I know that. No. See, this is the watering process. You hear something, that seed is plant. Now, you, you have to enjoy the watering process. What is that? The watering process is what helps that word, that seed to keep growing. But when you get the attitude, oh, I already heard that. Oh, I know that. Now you're denying the water process. And guess what's happening? You're not allowing that seed, that incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God to grow the way it's supposed to grow. One plant, one water, but God gives the increase. What I notice with many Christian believers, many people who believe God, they hear something, they say, oh, I already heard it, and they tune it out. You have to have the same expectation. You have to have the same excitement. If you heard the same story over and over, you have to have the same excitement hearing that story like you first heard it the first time. Why? It's part of the watering process. <laughs> Amen? And the watering process, that seed is planted, you water, God gives the increase. But if you reject and don't sow reverence to the watering process, that seed ain't going to grow or it's going to take longer to produce the fruit that was supposed to come in your life. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Okay, look at this. In Proverbs 3 and 5, it says this. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. I know people know this, but how many of us don't do this? What did he tell us to do? You and I, to trust in the Lord with what? All thy heart. When he says all thy heart, he's talking about the inside of you, your spirit man. We're doing the teaching on Sunday mornings. We're talking about, matter of fact, all the way through uh, 2024, the spirit of the Lord already, lead, already has spoken to me and leading me. We're going to be doing teaching on how to be led by the spirit of God. We're going to be talking about the spirit, the soul, and the body. We're going to be talking about how to develop the human spirit. Why? Because many of us never been taught how to be led by the Spirit of God. And the Word of God says those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. So you have to be not by your head. See, look what he said. Trust in the Lord with all thy what? Heart. That's trust in the Lord with all your spirit or your inner man. Okay? And lean not what? Onto your own understanding. Why? Your own understanding is your reasoning. That's your own understanding. That's where we reason. And, but that's not, that's not how God tells us to be led. He tells us to be led by the Spirit. See, your reason, and most of us have been programmed or we have been trained ever since we were kids. Unless you went to a born-again, spirit-filled Christian school and they trained you how to be led by the Spirit. But you know and I know not many of them teach you how to be led by the Spirit. I'm not saying all of them, but many of them. You just go through church and you we are trained to make decisions out of our reasoning. That's not what God tells you and I to do. He tells us to trust in the Lord with all of our spirit. With all of our spirit. Why? God is a spirit. And if he's a spirit, how do he communicate with us? Through our spirit. God don't communicate to us through our head or through our body. He communicates to you and I through our spirit. Spirits communicate to spirits. And we must, in 2024, we must become spirit conscious. You have, to, you, have to, you have to meditate on that. You have to believe it. I am a spirit. I'm not a body. You have a body. I am not a mind. I am a spirit. I possess a mind and I live in a body. A lot of people don't think they look at their body to control them. They look to their mind to control them. But you are a spirit. Come on, church. Come on, say that with me. Say, I am. Come on, say it with me. I am a spirit. Come on, say it like you mean it. The real me is a spirit. Come on, say it again. Say, the real me is a spirit. So what is God telling you or not? 
Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. That's the core. That's the inner man. Trust in the Lord with all your spirit. With all of it. Trust in the Lord with all your spirit. And lean not what? Onto your own understanding. Many people miss the will of God or the purpose of God because instead of going and listening to their spirit and what to do, they listen and reason with their heart. Well, I don't have enough money. I don't know how that's going to work out. And we get counsel from good people, good Christian people. Well, you should wait until that all worked out. God never led his people and never will by what looks right and everything's in place. Come on, you know this. Why? It's a walk of faith. Is a walk of faith. Healing don't happen because I listen to my body or my reasoning. Healing happens because I believe the word of God. Prosperity, the, the, the abundance of God works off, not off of my head, but by what the word says. He says, a given, it shall be given unto me. Good measures, pressed down, shaking the gut, then running over. Shoot men given to my bosom, some into your bosom. Sometimes it's like, I, that don't make sense. I don't have money, but I'm going to give my last. That's not reasoning. That's being led by the Spirit. Give. You bring your, all your tithes and offers into the storehouse. Now, 90% looks like it's less than 100%. But 90% with God is more than 100% by yourself. See, I'm just a mint church. I'm telling you. And I know there's people out there who don't believe in tithing. And they think it's under the law. And they think it's this. And I said, who did the law come by? The law came by Moses. Amen. But Abraham came before the law. And the Bible don't say we are the seed of Moses. It says we are the seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. And look, this is what I love. If you go back, I think it's over in Genesis around chapter 18, 17, 18. The Bible said he made covenant with Abraham because he knew Abraham would train and teach his children in the way of God. Now, if Abraham was a tither, Isaac was a tither. Jacob was a tither. Who you think they learned that from? They learned it from their father, Abraham. So guess what? The Bible says you have the seed of Abraham. So guess what? I'm going to, he probably, if I'm a seed of Abraham, I'm going to do what my father Abraham did. Ah, oh, church, come on. My children in the natural, me and my wife, our children in the natural, I don't care what other people say, I don't care what people preach, I don't care if they say it's under the law, not under the law, I believe it's not under the law, I believe it's a covenant, this is a covenant book, because we tithe, guess what they do, they tithe, oh, come on, I wish y'all see, why, that's what our dad taught us, well, that's what Father Raynard taught us. My children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. Why? Oh, my granddad taught us this. Why? He said, so we never forget that it's the Lord our God. Oh, glory. I'm getting excited because we don't forget that it's the Lord our God who made us, who gave us the power to get wealth. Why? It's a covenant. It's a covenant. Church, I'm just telling you, one thing my wife said to me years ago when we first got married, one thing she said over 20 some years ago, she said, one thing we will always do is tithe. I don't care what other people say. So when I heard other teachings about it's not God's will or it's not, it's under the law, I don't even pay attention to it. I don't even pay attention to it. Why? I found a formula that worked. I've been tithing and since we've been tithing, now we debt free. We don't owe no man anything but the love of him. You think I'm going to stop now? Because somebody comes up with something new or somebody they discovered that it, oh God, we don't have to tap, man, please. I don't care what you're going to discover. Lord, I'm tithing until I die. All my days of my life, I'm tithing unto the Lord. Why am I going to change something that's working? All right. Hallelujah. See, man, always looking for something new. Always looking for something new. Always looking like they discover something more. What they do, out of there's reasoning. Out of this reason. See, I was poor. Maybe you've never been poor. I was poor. I wasn't looking to get out of the will of God. I was looking to get into the blessings of God. And when I found out about tithing, I said, well, Lord, I ain't got nothing to lose. And every since, every since, our life just keeps getting better. and keep getting better. What? Obeying the word of God. Faith is acting on the word of God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto all your understanding. I don't get sick. I'm going to tell you right now, I do not get sick. He said he'll drive sickness and disease out of my out of my midst. I do not get sick. My wife will tell you, I do not get sick. Can't tell you the last time I've been sick. I do not get sick. Why? Healing is my covenant right. 
it belongs to me. I'm not like I'm better than anyone else. I believe it. You will never grow your faith. You know why many Christian people are not out of debt? I'll tell you why. They don't hear it enough and they don't believe it enough. You know why many Christian people don't walk in divine health? They don't listen and hear it enough. See, you have to be convinced of what this word says. I don't care what my body telling me. I don't know what care what my body's going through. I know without a doubt it's God's will for me to be healed. I know it's God's will for me to live in divine, in divine health. So I do everything I can to keep hearing that word, keep hearing it, keep believing God. I know it's God's will for me to be led by the Spirit. So I keep hearing it. I listen to a CD right now. God had me listen to uh, Dr. Kenneth Hagin, Brother Kenneth Hagin. Fought, we, uh, some people call him Papa Hagin. And I listen to them CDs over and over and over and over until God tells me why. I listen to them CDs so I can almost begin to speak them back exactly like him. Why? Because I want that Spirit to get that word to get in my spirit. I want it to get so deep in my spirit. I begin to dream about it. I begin to see it. I sit down, meditate on it. And I listen to the same CD over and over and over for a whole week, two weeks, until God tells me to move into the next one. Why? I want it in me. I'm not in this to play game. I am in this to win. I'm not in it to impress you. I'm not in it to oppress anyone else. I'm in it to be approved of God. I, it amazed me how many Christian people won't listen to the word. How many people won't listen to the anointed teaching of the word of God? See, faith comes, I should put it like this. Faith comes by anointing preaching of the word of God. Because everybody that's preaching the word of God, faith ain't coming. They got a whole lot of philosophy and, and, and stuff like that. You, you'd be amazed what Christian people believe. You just sit down and talk to them. You'll find out what they really believe. Some of them believe it's God's will for them to be sick. Some of them think it's God's will for them to, uh, he, he put sickness on you to teach you something. Then why don't God put you in sin to teach you something then? See how stupid that sounds? But people believe that stuff. You know why they believe that? Because they haven't heard the word. They heard, they heard church for doc doctrines and philosophy. And people who oppose this type of teaching or the word of God, they're they not preaching you the word of God. They're giving you their opinion or their life experiences. Because in the word, it says to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not what? On your own understanding. See, that's man understanding. Just because it's not working in your life doesn't mean it's not the word of God. How do we know the will of God? By the word of God. What is the word of God? It is the will of God. If you want to know the will of God, then get in his word. Well, you know what many people do? And I'm going to say this. I know I'm telling the truth. Many Christians listen to what preachers say instead of reading the Bible for themselves. They listen to their own doctrine or, or teaching instead of reading the Bible themselves. I know organizations even encourage you not to read the Bible, but just listen to the pastor or listen to the preacher or the priest or somebody. But won't tell you, don't, don't read the Bible. That's just craziness going somewhere to happen. You must become a student of the word of God, church. But you're going to have to act on it. When God tells you something, act on it. God, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. That's it. That's all you got to get to. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Amen. Now let's go to Jeremiah chapter 1. Talking about faith is acting on the word. I want to show you this before we go today. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm on the wrong way. I got to go to the north. I was going south. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12. Okay, this is in the uh, King James. It says this. Then saith the Lord unto me. Talking about Jeremiah. The Lord said to him, Thou has well seen, for I will hasten. Y'all know what hasten is to be in the hurry. I will hasten my word to perform it. Whoo! What did God hasten to do? He hastened to perform his word. He says, I will hasten my word to perform it. You know, I got my Amplified Classic over here. I'm going to reach over here. And let's, let's, let's read this in the Amplified Classic. I didn't give this to Glenn to put on, but I just, I just felt lit. I, 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 I sense the Lord lead me to read it in the Amplified Let's look at this in the Amplified Classic. Woo, glory be to God. Thank you for your word, Jesus. In the Amplified Classic. It's good to be led by the Lord. Okay, look at this here. The Amplified Classic, uh, Jeremiah 1 and 12. Look, let's see what it says. It says this. It says this. 
Then said the Lord to me, you have seen well, for I am alert and active. Who God, God says, I'm alert. See, God ain't caught off God. He says, I'm alert and active. Action, active is to be action. And active, what, doing what? Watching over my word to perform it. I love that. What is God doing? He's, he's alert. He's active, watching over his word to perform it. If you want to do something, oh, Lord, this is exciting. If you want God's word to work, all you got to do is what he told Joshua. Don't let this word depart from your mouth. Do what? Meditate on it day and night. Why? So you can exert to do it. And then what is it? You, not God, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. See, what did God watch over? If you want God to act on your behalf, then speak God's word out of your mouth. Get to the place. See, it's going to take discipline on your part, my part, everybody. I'm not saying anything else unless it's what God's word says. Okay? When it comes to finances, what I'm going to say. Oh, I don't have enough. Like, no, no, no. That ain't what God says. God's word says you have, you have more than enough. This is the victory that overcometh the world. What victory? Even thy faith. What is faith? Faith is acting on the word. That's the victory. The victory that overcomes the world is you and I acting on what God's word says. If I want to act on the word, I'm going to let his word stay in my mouth. I'm only going to say what God says. That the Greek word for that is homo, homo, homologia. Homologia is the same. What? I'm only going to speak what God speak. And if you can discipline yourself to do that, watch what God start doing in your, in your life. When you start saying, I have abundance, I have more than enough. When you say I'm healed and I, I walk in divine health, every sickness, every disease germ, every virus that touches my body dies instantly. When you say it's God's will for me to be healed. See, when you start speaking that out of your mouth, see what happens. The Bible says you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. And I must make my way prosperous and quit right now because I'm out of time. All right. So look, you guys remember, come back, join. We'll pick up on this next week. But remember this, that God is exalted. Satan, he is defeated. And Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. P-O-H. Peace out, homies and homiettes. We'll see you next week. God bless you for now. Bye. Hallelujah.